Hi, I'm Chris Merwinders, and hey, you can do this. Life revealed unto the because this is biquad non-lin. And you might well ask, what the heck is that? Well, I'm working on a whole bunch of things, and this is basically one of them. Biquad non-lin is a plugin that is a simple biquad filter that's been modified in the same way that I modified capacitor to make capacitor 2. It's not the only one that I'm doing like this, but this is the one that's based off of more or less the same kind of code that I've been using for uh, anti-aliasing filters and things. A biquad filter is a pretty clean sounding digital filter. I've got it smoothed and stuff like that. But this is still a clean sounding digital filter. What we've got right here is a low pass and frequency is setting what the frequency is. And Q is showing you what the literal Q factor is for the plugin. So if you got like 0 0.7 or thereabouts, that's a pretty smooth Butterworth style filter. And then you can increase the Q more to do more of a resonant effect. However, you'll see this control, non-lin. And non-lin changes it from being normal to something a little more unusual. We can hear it doing this. Let's increase the cue a little bit while we're at it. This is a regular biquad filter. But then as we increase non-lin, we can get slightly different tone out of it. And in fact, I can even turn it up to full crank to try to get a bit of a grungy effect out of it. And we can do that with the Q factor also by increasing the resonance of it and just exaggerating it. And so this would be a analog style biquad because the way that the uh, frequency cutoff is being modulated compared to this, we turn non-lin all the way up. We can start fooling around with frequency modulation of the biquad cutoff, which is normally not something biquad filters like to do. But in this case, we're forcing this one to do it. It turned out to be such a strange thing to do to a plugin, to a filter, that I had to revise the way the biquad is made. You'll see we've got our type control here. And that type control under the usual biquad filter is doing low pass, uh, peak, high pass, and notch. But in this one, it won't because it wouldn't work with the notch or the high pass. But we do have past the 0 0.5 setting on type. A band pass. And we can make the band pass real tight as well. And then we can add the non-lin to it. You'll notice it's not very loud, but that's because it's matching gain with the original sound. If we crank up non-lin on the band pass,
whether or not we crank the cue way up, we start getting a much grungier sound than the stock biquad has. So this could almost become a synth filter or something. You could use this for the purpose of making it be a little dirty. I feel like the setting of one is too much nonlinearity, so what I usually do for using it in other purposes is giving it 0.5 for more of an analog effect. And then how do you go about getting a notch or a high pass? With the invoid control right at the bottom. And this is a notch. We can make it a dirty notch. We can give it lower Q. And we can use type to set it back to purely a high pass. And with this one, we can have tell a big difference between dirty and clean. Perfectly clean by quad high pass. We can increase the Q to around seven or so. Oh, I made it go too far. Don't mind me. And there's a high pass, but then as we start bringing in nonlinearity, you start really hearing what that does. It's modulating the cutoff frequency. So it gets kind of raspy. And then if we set the nonlin to 0 0.5 again, It still acts more or less like a normal filter, but we've got a certain amount of analog grunge going in there. And again, the whole purpose of this is to be able to make it so that the biquads cutout um, does a little bit of frequency modulation based on whether the capacitors that are supposed to build it up are not quite consistent based on how much voltage is against them. And that's what I did in, in Capacitor 2. And there you have it. And this is a sort of... Um, This is basically a toolkit plugin. I make this because I'm working on stuff, and my hope is that I can use this technology to do a better job of, say, a analog emulation in a uh, new console version or something coming up, because there's always a lot of new stuff coming up. And that is Biquad. And then if we switch it off, we're back to a regular song. And you can have Biquad right now. But there's one more thing. This is Air Windows Meter, a VST3 plugin. As you can see, we've got uh, three different areas. This is what I'm going to be using to try to demonstrate people's uh, like classic record sounds, because there's a lot to be learned. One of the things to be learned, this is a um, RMS peak meter, and these dots are peaks. That's usually what gets splatted against the top of the meter. But this is an older song of mine in an earlier mix. And so it's got some dynamic range. You see it turning slightly blue and that's because it's following certain rules that I've observed. 
this meter down here, this is a slew meter. We've got the same shape of the RMS curve, but this is not peaks, this is slew values. So bright sounds will go up top up here. Darker sounds will be down here. And it's following the same metric because the closer these match, the better the sound tends to be. And then at the very bottom, this is a um, zero crossing meter. Here, I'm gonna take off my headphones for a moment. I will have turned down the volume so I can speak more quietly. This bottom meter is a zero crossing meter. And what that shows you is the balance of bass against high frequencies and how long does the signal kind of keep on going doing its thing until it crosses zero again. And there are a variety of ways in which we can interpret these meters and work out what was happening with some of the classic albums that sold a lot of copies back when people spent money and bought music. This is all decodable, it's all interpretable. And that's why I designed this mirror. You'll be seeing more of this because I'm going to have stuff where the um, records that I'm talking about will get played over the internet and I'll put out videos with this on them where you can see what the meter is doing on classic tracks that you might have heard of or that might sound more like it was made in a big real studio rather than on a laptop. I can also show examples of stuff that was done much more recently and shows up terribly on this meter. And I can also show stuff that you might not expect where it's a different genre of music. It's not just classic hits. Instead, it's things like drum and bass or techno or whatever. And you'll see that those things that don't sound like your classic hits show up on these meters as something to be paid attention to. One of the quickest things you find happening in recent uh, genres is that the kicks and the drums and things start becoming really much larger, but then larger and louder. But then the background sounds tend to follow the same rules that you see here. And also one more thing. You can kinda download Air Windows Meter now, but there's a catch. I've got this up and running. In fact, just before making this video, I had to do a debug run because the zero crossing meter wasn't working on Reaper where it was calling the double processing, as in a 64-bit bus, and that needed some debugging before I could show you it here. This is on GitHub. It is something that I've built locally. And as, as you can see, I was able to build it locally and it works. It's up on GitHub using a thing called Pample Juice, where the idea is it's supposed to be able to build everybody's plugins literally on GitHub so you can just download them from there. And it is not successfully doing that. Let's, uh... Instead, what's happening is the Pample Juice side of it isn't working yet. And the guy who made it is busy working on his own synthesizer. He's got a lot of stuff to do. He seems pretty happy with how much I've been able to do so far. But it's not his job to get my thing running. And I'm way out of my depth. So right now, what you see here, the code, including the change that I made right before making this video is up on my GitHub. I could even point you to it. And none of the builds actually worked. But it's open source software. It's up there. You could fork it. You could download it. You could do all of those things. And if you can get it to work, then you can also have ESD3 meter. Also, if you can get it to work, please tell me how you did so that I can. Because the next step is getting these uh, builds to work. I have 
a single VSD3 for Mac. I could put that up for download, but I don't think it's got the signed stuff. I do think I know how to solve the problem with the, the GitHub build, not understanding what a signed plugin is. I'm pretty sure I can figure that one out. That's going to be next week. I'll work on that. Uh, but if you download it, you wouldn't be able to use my signing certificate anyhow, so that's another story. And I don't know why the Linux part isn't working, and I don't know why the Windows part isn't working. But again, here is Meter. This is the first plugin to be released as a GPL VST3. And I'm working on doing a whole bunch of other stuff along those lines. It's really exciting, but it's also really grueling. There's a lot to it. And all I can do is show you the one that I was able to make work. Getting the rest of it, you can wait for me to be able to do it. I can't tell you how long that's going to be. I don't know how to do this stuff. The fact that I've been able to get this far is pretty impressive. I don't know how to make Pample Juice work. I don't know anything about GitHub Actions. I don't know any of that stuff. If you know about those things and you want this plugin, fork the project, make it work, because all the stuff that remains to make it work is the stuff that you know about and I don't. Do that, and then if you're really nice, tell me what you did so that I can make it work and give these things to everybody. Because right now I am, uh, I've got my copy. And all the source code up to the minute is available on GitHub for anybody who knows better than me how to make this stuff work. I can't do fairer than that. I can only do as much as I can do. And so far I have been able to make this metering plugin work. It works in Twisted Wave, it works in Reaper. I've got a bunch of other stuff that I've got in the pipeline that hopefully, and there's still going to be old school plugins, much like um, Biquad Nonlin, which is the first one that I put out. All of this stuff is coming together, but I can't do all of it. I'm just burning hours trying to do the, the getting of the VST3s to work, and I'll be burning hours trying to get the uh, building on GitHub using GitHub Actions, which I don't know anything about. That's what the Pample Juice project is supposed to be about. And that's what I will either eventually get myself, or if anybody wants to make this happen much faster, this is a great time to get involved. Just saying. Because I've taken it as far as I can for the moment, but it's right up there. It's up there waiting for you to fork the project and use it. And with that, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.